This is a journey through a number of Bolivian cities, which brings us face to face with an important workforce made up of informal workers and businesses who carry the burden of their livelihoods on their shoulders. With the weight of life on their shoulders, stories about the informal sector in Bolivia. Here, as in the majority of Latin American countries, the informal sector is made up of workers and businesses who operate outside the state system. By not registering their productive activities with the authorities, they miss out on benefits granted by the government, such as pension, health care, and social security. Many informal workers and businesses in Bolivia do not see much scope for growth, to generate more and better jobs, or to increase their productivity. En este en este negocio casi no se genera tanto ingreso porque los precios son mínimos, o sea que nos uh, alcanza sí. para vivir, para para criar a nuestros hijos y para nuestras obligaciones. The informal sector accounts for 80% of Bolivia's total workforce in rural and urban areas. In Bolivia, uh, y eso dice el Plan Nacional de Desarrollo, reconocemos tres tipos de economía. Y ahí estaría también la parte de la llamada informalidad. Tiene problemas, primero su informalidad, es invisible para el conjunto de la economía. Es importante en los hechos, pero es invisible en términos, por ejemplo, de las cuentas nacionales. In an effort to help the Bolivian government reduce its informal sector, the World Bank produced a study which analyzed the situation and which identified the most significant factors restricting the development and formalization of workers and of micro and small business. The study found that both men and women face the same pressures which lead them into the informal sector. Interestingly, women make up 65% of informal workers. In addition, women's informal businesses are typically not as profitable as men's. My only hope is to live like I'm living. Por lo menos coger algún día a tener donde estén tranquilas mis hijas. Un pequeño terreno, es mi, mi, mi única emoción, dejarlos eso para que ellas estén tranquilas. In this context, we can highlight four elements which explain the difference between men and women. Women create their businesses principally to support their families. The sectors women work in tend to be less profitable. Women tend to have a lower educational level than men. Women's activities or businesses tend to be smaller. In practice, the existence of a large informal sector significantly reduces the development potential of a country. It limits a country's ability to fight against poverty in an effective and sustainable manner. In order to obtain evidence and information to support the analysis and recommendations of the study, the team undertook a survey of 640 businesses that were representative of Bolivia's urban areas. In addition, 20 focus groups were held, which included informal businessmen and women in four Bolivian cities. La Paz, Cochabamba, Santa Cruz, and El Alto. These focus groups provided data on the six main informal sectors. Grocery stores, restaurants and food sales, manufacturing of wool yarn and wool cloth clothes, manufacturing of wool and alpaca wool clothes, cargo and passenger transport, wood furniture manufacturing. Mire, Ozio is 
venta de barrotes, me ayuda haciendo carteras tejidas, chinelas bordadas en Shakira, arbolitos de bonsai. No les puedo decir un monto exacto de ganancia porque no se puede sacar, porque con el mismo dinero que ingresa, el mismo dinero se invierte. El banco busca que el cliente y sobre todo el beneficiario no solamente participe, sino que además sea protagonista. Y llevar ese rol a un proyecto concreto, como es un estudio sobre informalidad, requiere cierta innovación. ¿Cómo hacemos para que la gente que vive la informalidad, el pequeño empresario, la pequeña comerciante, contribuyan a un reporte del Banco Mundial? ¿no? The information gathered helped us determine the direct impact of formalization on the profitability of small businesses. The study found that the micro and small business sector is surprisingly diverse. Based on this, new parameters for this sector were defined. Micro and small businesses were found to range from those with under three employees at the lower end of the spectrum, those with three to five employees in the middle, and at the higher end of the spectrum are those businesses with five to 25 employees. The study found that formalization was a positive factor for those businesses that fall in the middle, but a negative factor for the rest. We conclude from this that not all formalization policies can be applied in the same way. Size does matter. Therefore, it's important to keep the diversity of the micro and small business sector in mind. Taking the results of this analysis into account, the study presents five principal recommendations to increase the formalization of those micro and small businesses that would benefit from formalization. Increase the benefits of becoming formal. Para formalizar a las empresas, se necesita más que inspecciones y multas. Debe haber incentivos también. Se puede introducir incentivos como la capacitación, acceso a los mercados de exportación y el financiamiento. Disseminate information on the benefits of formalization. Bueno, la mayoría de las empresas pequeñas no tienen información suficiente sobre lo que es formalizarse y los beneficios que ello conlleva. Por lo tanto, una, una disseminación proactiva de esta información podría inducirles a formalizarse. Simplify procedures. La experiencia internacional en cuanto a simplificación de trámites y a facilitar el pago de impuestos se refiere, se han revelado eficaces para incentivar a las empresas informales a formalizarse. Improve control, supervision and incentives. Incrementar las medidas de control y fiscalización hacen más evidente los costos de mantenerse en una economía informal. El control y fiscalización debe ser ejercido en una primera etapa a las empresas grandes y no a las pequeñas. Increase productivity. Otras medidas que se pueden utilizar para mejorar la productividad de las micro y pequeñas empresas es, por ejemplo, apoyarlas para que incorporen tecnología nueva, mejorar la calidad de la educación para que dispongan de mano de obra y empresarios mejor capacitados, luchar contra la corrupción, y mantener un, un, un entorno macroeconómico estable. Fernando, tenemos que vender hoy día, ¿no? Para ganar más dinero, ¿no? Sí. The study also provides options that help reduce differences in productivity between women and men, and incentives to enter the formal sector through interventions that promote affordable credit and financial services aimed at women relevant training and education in the sectors women work in, support in housekeeping, particularly in childcare, access to new markets, development of skills in business and self-knowledge through associations and organizations. The policies adopted in other countries can serve as a base for the work to be carried out in Bolivia. In Peru, through a loans program called Finca, a number of business women were trained in business administration, which in turn improved their productivity. In addition to the improved knowledge, experience, and incomes, the formal and informal organizational systems were strengthened, and networks were created, thus aiding in closing the skills gap that exists between women and men. In Guatemala, a community-based childcare service targeted poor women in the capital city, 
The service gives uneducated single mothers a chance to earn a decent living and at the same time provide a service for the community. The women that took part in this project were able to achieve a higher level of economic stability and improve participation in the job market. The Bolivian government has already begun programs which support small and micro businesses. Their efforts must be consolidated and further developed. For many small businesses, there are considerable benefits of becoming formal. We must provide the necessary incentives for this to happen and thus contribute to the country's economic growth. The Bank of Mundial is committed to assessing Bolivia y a proveer toda la asistencia técnica que sea necesaria para aumentar la productividad, el empleo y el crecimiento. Este estudio es solo el inicio de un apoyo técnico que el Banco Mundial piensa brindar a Bolivia para seguir ampliando las maneras de luchar contra la pobreza. There are many families in Bolivia that still carry the burden of their poverty because they do not have a formal economic activity that can give them stability, security, and education. This is a complex and significant reality that cannot be ignored. The risks of not investing appropriately are too great. However, the advantages that can be had by taking on this challenge are even greater for the Bolivian people.